Hello everyone. This week we're going to talk about intentionality in technology-enabled learning design and go through some educational technology models as well as a couple of hands-on activities later in, in, the, uh, in our time together today. So here we go. That's our outline for today. First thing we're going to talk about is the SAMR EdTech Evaluation Framework, which uh, stands for Substitution, Augmentation, Modification, and Redefinition. And I love this infographic by Sylvia Duckworth uh, that sort of gives us a little bit of a visual perspective on what the SAMR model stands for. And as we can see on the bottom there, we've got uh, Substitution and Augmentation as Enhancements, and then Modification and Redefinition as Transformational. So substitution. Uh, one example that I can think of of this is uh, back in the day there are overhead projectors with uh, transparency transparencies that you'd actually print out on a, a printer and then you'd put them on your overhead projector as you can see here. Soon after digital projectors uh, arrived in classrooms, they got started used basically in the same way, uh, but instead of putting a, printing out a a slide to put on there, it was digital slides, uh, you know, using PowerPoint, for example. So that's one example of substitution. Next one is augmentation. Um, so again, with the overhead projector and PowerPoint, when PowerPoints arrived, slides could be quickly and easily edited rather than just printed out, uh, which was a, you know, a relatively inconvenient task to create new slides. But with PowerPoint, you could just go into your computer quickly modify them and you're done. Uh, one of the big benefits to this is if there are any errors in the presentation or if there are just new things happening like uh, are happening all the time with technology, it's much easier to keep things up to date. So that's augmentation. Next is modification. So with the, uh, the overhead projector, you're limited to static images. Uh, now with the digital projector, you can put up videos, for example. And by videos, I'm, I'm talking about instructional videos, probably. So YouTube, TeacherTube, things like that. So this is something that wasn't really possible uh, with the overhead projector. It was not possible. You could do it in other ways, but the digital projector is much more convenient. So that's modification. And then lastly is redefinition. Uh, so now we've got the computer and the projector, but instead of, uh, you know, doing, putting on a recorded video, for example, we could use it to bring in a guest lecturer from another part of the country or the world. Uh, you could have learners inside or outside of the classroom also connecting. So this is a, something so far from that original transparency projector. It's not even recognizable, and the capabilities in this case are quite a bit more advanced. Uh, maybe not necessarily advanced, but you have more, much, uh, you can do much more with the tool than originally envisioned when you were just transferring your transparencies to PowerPoint slides. So here's some uh, examples of technology integration. Uh, so the one problem is a teacher notices that students consistently struggle with a given topic or concept in their course. So one potential solution that involves technology is that the teacher decides to record short videos that explain and demonstrate the concepts, which can be accessed at any time. Another one, or actually, and then the question is, where does that fall on the, uh, on the SAMR model? I would probably say that it's either augmentation or modification, depending on how, the, how it's implemented. Augmentation would be, it's just substituting in-class instruction with a little video. And on the modification side, it actually allows uh, the instructor to differentiate the learner to a certain extent, or for the learners, uh, by allowing them to review the, uh, the information uh, when it's easy for them, or relatively easy for them to do so, rather than have it wash over them during the lecture time in the class, and, or figuring out what the teacher said in the classroom. Another one would be, uh, here's the problem, a teacher wants students to write a story that will be reviewed and edited by two peers. The teacher wants the students to be able to see the edits and comments. Obviously, this could be done in an analog fashion with pen and paper. 
it would be logistically probably uh, relatively challenging to get all the papers uh, passed around to each other, but not impossible by any means. So one solution would be to use Google Docs or similar tool uh, for the student to either uh, or to create their their story in there, and then allow multi-authored authored collaboration of the text so that uh, the feedback or the edits could be made by the peer reviewers uh, in a way that's not only probably logistically easier to do, but makes it a little bit easier, I suspect, for the, uh, the teacher to give feedback to the original author and those who are uh, peer reviewing the, the text. And in terms of where on the SAMR scale that would fall, probably augmentation and modification again, again, again depending pro on how it's implemented by the, the teacher. Then last one here, or maybe second to last one, uh, here's some examples of uh, another problem. A teacher wants to develop students' public speaking ability, but time for the student presentation in class is not available, especially if it's an individual project. This is a pretty common issue. So one solution would be the teacher uh, get students to film themselves making the presentation, which are then viewed privately by the teacher or their peers and assessed accordingly. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say augmentation or modification again because I, it probably does augment, and it, depending on how it's implemented, it could be allow for modification of the task uh, because the recorded you can just do more with a recorded video than. Uh, than a real-time presentation in terms of what you do with it after the fact. The next uh, EdTech framework we're going to look at is TPAC, uh, which stands for Technological, Pedagogical, and Context Knowledge. We'll go over that quick here. So here's the, con the different contexts. You've got a uh, down here, a content knowledge context. So let's say we're talking about generative AI the instructor or the teacher would need to have some knowledge about the subject area. Uh, next is pedagogical knowledge, uh, knowledge about the teaching methods that could potentially be useful. And then lastly is the technical knowledge. So how you can use the pedagogy you want with the technology uh, in, in, as well as with the content knowledge and in that all of those overlap in TPAC. And again, this can be another useful tool for evaluating ed tech. If you're short in any one of these areas as a teacher instructor, you may have the, uh, the content knowledge and maybe the pedagogical knowledge, but if maybe the technical knowledge isn't, isn't where you need to be to implement it, that might be an issue. Another issue around technology could be uh, the cost or availability. So it might be perfect technology that you know how to use, but if it's too expensive, that could be a, a showstopper. Uh, privacy could be an issue. So if it's a web-based tool, but there are privacy concerns around the tool, you may have everything set up, but that would be a showstopper in terms of not uh, having the appropriate, appropriate privacy uh, safeguards built in. So let's look at each one separately now. So content knowledge, again, this is knowledge about the content or subject area and uh, you know, one question you might want to ask yourself is what are you teaching and what is your own knowledge on the subject? Um, the next thing to look at would be the pedagogical knowledge. Knowledge about pedagogy or teaching method, including the practices or methods of teaching and learning for that particular uh, content knowledge. Um, so do you know what instructional strategies will work best uh, to meet your students' needs? as well as the requirements of the lesson plan? Again, this is another question to ask. And then lastly, we have technical knowledge. And this is knowledge about the technology, including thinking about and working with the technology tools and resources. And as I mentioned before, uh, you know, privacy and cost are two big, big things to keep in mind. So a question to ask yourself or questions would be what digital tools are available to you and which do you know well enough to use, which would be most appropriate? Does it have privacy, uh, enough privacy built in, um, et cetera? So at first glance, TPAC and SAMR seem to have similarities, or SAMR, uh, but the two are quite different. The SAMR model is arguably best for providing a high-level overview of technology integration in the classroom. Uh, however, with SAMR, 
it might be too simple, or at least some academics have argued that SAMR might be a too simple of a framework to uh, fully evaluate a particular educational technology in a particular context. So TPAC doesn't treat technology separate from teaching and learning, uh, and instead TPAC incorporates the interdisciplinary nature of pedagogy, content, and technology. And I personally use both the TPAC as well as the SAMR models just to look at the technology from do two different perspectives. And in my particular case, I feel like that is actually quite a, go a good way for me to review different ed educational technologies to just to make sure I'm not missing an important factor that might, uh, might stand in the way of the technology actually doing what we want it, what I want it to do in a way that would be beneficial to my learners without uh, causing any problems uh, with privacy. A digital version of Bloom's, tech, uh, Bloom's taxonomy. So this is the, the one that we're all familiar with. We, you know, remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And this is the Bloom's digital taxonomy. And you can see we start down with remembering and it associates different technologies with the different levels of the taxonomy. So we've got bookmarking, copying, highlighting, on understanding, uh, journaling, tweeting, tagging. And these are just examples, of course. So applying, charting, editing, uploading, analyzing, mind map, survey, linking, validating, and then evaluating uh, grading, which we're getting uh, getting to do in class with our peers, testing, posting, moderating, and then lastly, creating. And at that level, we've got blogging, filming, podcasting, and directing. And again, depending on how any person does the, do these tasks, you might be at a slightly different level, but this is just another tool to help us think about whether or not the activity that we're planning uh, will meet the learning objectives we have for anything on the Bloom's taxonomy. So that's it for the lecture today. We'll get into the hands-on activities uh, either in class or if you're just uh, doing this asynchronously, follow along below in the, uh, in the blog post for this topic. Uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. Take care.